Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Creatively Expressive. My name is Amy and today I want to show you how to make seven high-end bee-themed home decor items on a budget. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, please stick around. All right, so for our first project, we're gonna be making over these hexagon shelves that I found from my local Goodwill. I think they're about three or $4 a piece. I bought them a long time ago, so I, I don't remember the exact price. But I'm just painting it um, with this slate gray Hello Hobby brand chalk paint that I got from Walmart. Um, my Walmart used to sell Waverly chalk paint, but now they sell this Hello Hobby brand. Let me know in the comments below if your Walmart still sells the Waverly or if they so this Hello Hobby brand now. Anyways, so I'm just covering all sides, the inside, the outside, the front. I don't worry about the back though. But um, I just give it, I think I gave it like two coats. Just uh, keep painting until you can't see any of the original color peeking through anymore. Okay, so now that I have it completely covered, I'm gonna use this Moonstruck chalk paint. It's like a real light gray chalk paint. And I'm gonna mix it with this light gray to make a slightly lighter shade of gray. And then I'm gonna take a chippy brush or chip brush that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna start dry brushing on my shelf. And I'm just gonna do the same thing as when I painted it, all sides, front, inside, outside, not worrying about the back though. And just keep dry brushing until you're happy with it. And now I'm gonna take black chalk paint and I'm gonna mix it with that same slate gray chalk paint. I put a little too much black in, I thought, so I'm adding some more slate gray to make it a little lighter. And then I'm just gonna go back in with my same chip brush. I didn't even rinse it off and just dry brush on some more. And I end up uh, using both shades of that darker gray that I made and I'm just brushing it on like I said until you're happy with it it's all up to you and now I'm taking that moonstruck gray chalk paint and I'm just gonna have it all by itself and I'm going to brush on a real light shade of gray all over the whole thing. I'm just trying to give it some more texture, dimension, I don't know, like a rustic feel maybe, maybe a wood grain look. I don't know. What would you call this look? Comment below and let me know what you call this look. I'm not sure. I'm just winging it here. And now I'm going back in with that original slate gray chalk paint. And I'm just going to dry brush just that on. And I'm just trying to uh, even the color out a little bit. And like I said, it's completely up to you. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to. I just thought it was a little, I don't know. I just wanted to tone it down a bit, I guess. So I'm just dry brushing over the whole thing again. And now I'm just checking out my work, trying to decide if I'm done, if I'm happy with it. Now I'm giving you a thumbs up because I'm happy. And here's all three completed. What do you think? I think they turned out pretty cute.
Okay, now this is just a little bonus project. It's not, I didn't count it as one of the seven because uh, it's not really bee themed per se, but I am using it as part of my bee decor. So that's why I include it. It's just real quick. I'm just painting it or I'm mixing Aqua Sky, I think it was, by Apple Barrel with ivory chalk paint to get like a really pale shade of blue. Trying to go for a shade that reminds me of like the color of the bee's wings, I guess. I mean, that's what I was going for, at least. That was my thoughts. So I'm just painting this little terracotta pot that I got from the Dollar Tree. Uh, it came in a pack of two. I got it when stuff was still a dollar, so it was 50 cents. Now it's still a 25 tree. Now I'm just taking that ivory chalk paint and I'm mixing it with some water. I'm just trying to get it really watered down. I just keep adding until I think it's watery enough. And now I'm just going to brush this, I'm calling it a whitewash, I don't know if that's what you call it or not, but I'm just brushing it onto the pot and then I'm wiping it off. And it just gives it a little bit more dimension, I guess. I just like the look of it. So I just keep wash or brushing it on and then wiping it off with a paper towel and I just keep going until I'm happy with the look of it and then I just filled it with some greenery that I got from Walmart for 99 cents and here's the completed look do you see the texture? I think it's it's subtle, but I think it adds a lot to it. All right, so for this project, um, I got this little B card from uh, my husband and I. We went to a trip. Uh, we went on a trip for our anniversary up to Prescott, and I found this little uh, B card in a little gift shop up there, and I thought it was so cute, and it would be perfect for my B decor. So I'm just using this piece of scrap wood cut down to the same side as the card and I'm painting it this pale yellow color of chalk paint and I just paint enough coats until I'm happy with it. I'm not going to be able to cover completely cover that knot in the wood but just paint on a few coats until you're happy with the coverage. Then I just paint the back and I'm painting the sides, and I don't worry about the front. Now I'm going to take my card, and I'm going to take my paper cutter, and I'm just going to slice off the back part of the card because we don't need that. Now I'm going to take some Mod Podge, mine's matte Mod Podge, doesn't really matter, it's up to you. And I'm just going to cover the piece of wood with a layer of Mod Podge, and then I'm also going to put a layer of Mod Podge onto the back of the card, because the paper is thicker, so I thought I should probably coat both surfaces with the Mod Podge. I don't know if you need to, but that's what I thought, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> And now I'm just going to stick it onto the piece of scrap wood. And 
And now I'm just going to put another layer of Mod Podge over the top of it just to protect the surface of the card to make for easier, easier cleaning, I guess. Now once that's dry, I'm going to go in with my sander and I'm just uh, distressing some of the edges with the little sander. And then also you can see the card, it's a little bit wider than the wood. So I'm going to take my sander and I'm just going to sand along the edges. And that's just going to take off that extra piece of card and also give add to the little the distressed look of it. But you just, you sand against the edge and you kind of go in like a downward motion just to get the edge off. And now I'm just covering the whole thing in Mod Podge just so it's easier to clean. I don't know if it's actually easier to clean, but that was why I was doing it. That was my thought process on that. I'm sure it is easier to clean with Mod Podge. <laughs> We're going to go with that. And there you go, it's done. That was easy, quick and easy. And you can see I'm just showing all the edges of the card are flush with the piece of wood now that I sanded it. And it's beautiful. And here it is on my shelf. On my little hexagon shelf. This is how I plan to display it. But it's just such an easy way to make a little sign. You find a cute card that you like. All right, for this project, I have this little house-shaped sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just ripping all the stuff off of it. There's little foam flowers on it and felt leaves glued to it. Just ripping them off. They're stuck on there really good. And now I'm just taking a little razor blade scraper thingy. And I'm just scraping off the part that I couldn't get off with my fingers. And then I sanded the whole thing smooth. And now I got this piece of scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. It was $1.99. They always have sales on their scrapbook paper though, so you can get it cheaper. So I just put the house down onto the piece of scrapbook paper. And I'm just tracing it with a pencil. So now I'm just cutting out the shape that I made. And now with this one, uh, since the paper was thinner than the card, I just put a layer of Mod Podge onto the house. I don't worry about putting it on the back of the paper. And now I'm just going to stick that piece of scrap of paper on there. Make sure the edges are lined up the best you can. Push it on there, smooth it out. And now I'm just going in with the top layer of the Mod Podge to protect the paper. Now that it's dry, I'm going to go back in with that little small hand sand sander again, and I'm going to 
go along the edges in a downward motion just to get off that excess um, edge that's hanging over that's not flush with the wood. And now you can see the paper is flush with the wood. And now I made this um, little stencil with my silhouette and some, uh, what is it? I don't know. Vinyl. It's not the permanent vinyl. It's uh, Oracle 641, which I guess is like removable vinyl. It came with my, uh, with my silhouette. It was like a package deal. You got a bunch of vinyl with the silhouette. So I just, I made this little home sweet home sign and I'm just weeding out the letters because I'm gonna use it as a stencil. Normally you would weed out the, the extra area and leave the words, but um, since I'm using it as a stencil, you weed out the words and leave the big part. And now I have my uh, transfer tape. And I'm just gonna put my stencil down onto the transfer tape. And then I'm just using my little scraper tool. It's a Cricut brand scraper tool. I use it with my silhouette cutter machine. <laughs> Mix and match. And then I just pull off the back. And now I have this piece of parchment paper. I I saw this tip somewhere. And you uh, put your vinyl down onto parchment paper first. And you leave a little bit of the sticky part showing at the top. That way you can um, place it down onto your sign and make sure that it's lined up and centered the way you want it to before it's stuck. So you can move it around a bunch and make sure it's the way you want it before it's stuck down to your project. Once you're happy, you just stick the top part down and then you remove the parchment paper part and then you just press the rest of the sign down. And then you remove your transfer tape. Oh, part of my E is coming off there, so I gotta make sure that I get all the spots scraped down really good so that they're stuck to the sign and not stuck to the transfer tape anymore. So that's what I'm doing here. And now we're gonna pull off the transfer tape. And now I also learned this little handy dandy tip. If you put a layer of Mod Podge over your stencil first, then um, it prevents bleeding, bleed through with the paint color. So first I'm gonna put down a layer of Mod Podge and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that dry. And then I'll come back in with the paint. And then we'll have nice crisp edges to our letters and no bleed through. Now I'm just taking painter's tape and going around the edges where I don't want any paint to get because I'm kind of messy <laughs> when it comes to painting and so I don't want to have to worry about not getting paint onto uh, the areas that I don't want it to be. <laughs> now I have this King's Gold by Apple Barrel. And I'm going to paint over the sweet part of my sign. I'm going to try to be careful and not get it over any other area that I don't want it to get the home or the other home. So I'm just being very careful of painting on a layer of this king's gold over the sweet.
and then I'm just trying to speed up the process so I'm blow drying it with my hair dryer so it'll dry faster and then I go in with another coat of that King's Gold Yellow and now um, I'm just scraping my extra paint back into my bottle so I don't waste any because I've wasted so much paint over the years before I finally figured that out <laughs> that you could do that now I'm just taking the slate gray and I'm going to go over both of the homes with the slate gray. Being careful not to get it in the sweet area of my sign. Now I'm just doing a second coat of the gray so I have good coverage. And now I'm taking this Pure Gold by Folk Art. Um, it's a metallic gold paint and I'm going over the sweet with the pure gold paint. And the reason I painted it um, with the King's Gold first is because I found that the metallic paint doesn't give you good coverage at all. And so uh, in order to have to paint less coats of the metallic, you paint it with a similar shade in like a matte color paint first, and then you go over it with the metallic and you have to paint way less coats than you would if you just started with the metallic color. So I can do two coats as opposed to 20 coats. And now I'm just peeling away my vinyl stencil. And I'm being very careful. And uh, when I was peeling over the, the tea and the sweet, it started to peel up. So now I'm going from a different direction, trying to keep it from peeling up. The gray, I didn't have any trouble with, but the gold, wanted to peel up a little bit on that T. So I'm just trying to be careful and go slow because I've had one projects before where it peeled up all the paint and had to start all over again from scratch. So I'm trying to be careful here. But I did have like around the edges of the gold letters for some reason it peeled up just around the edges of it a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. So I just kept going. Just kept weeding. Now I'm just weeding out the centers of the letters and try to be careful, don't dig too deep because you don't want to gouge your sign. And then I just happened to rub my finger over the T. And then I noticed when I was rubbing over the letters that the, the gold that had come up around the edges of the letters, like just stuck right back down when I was rubbing it. So I'm just rubbing over the whole word and it looks perfect. Now I'm taking some jute twine and I'm just gonna wrap it around that top part of the house just to fill in that, that blank space and add a little, uh, I don't know, rustic look to it, I guess, farmhousey look. So just wrap it around a few times. And then I'm going to just tie it into a little bow, just a little shoestring bow. And I spent way too much time on this part trying to get the strings placed just so. Way too much time I spent, but you know. <laughs> just go until you're happy with it. It's all about what looks good to you, what you're happy with. So I'm finally happy, cut off the excess, and it's done. And I think it is so stinking cute. And here it is in my little hexagon shelves. 
And here are all three of my projects together inside of the shelves. What do you think? I love them. I think they're so stinking cute. So for this project, I had, I started out with a completely different idea in mind and it was not working. I was going to paint this. Oh, I got this sign from the Dollar Tree, by the way. That's a hexagon sign. But I was trying to paint around the, the raised letters and the paint was just like pooling around the letters. Um, so I wasn't happy with that. So then I go in with my razor blade and I'm trying to be careful and remove the raised part so that I could put it back on afterwards. So I'm trying to be as careful as I can and get it off without breaking it. And I have this putty knife, I think is what it is. And I'm trying to get under there and remove it, get it unstuck. So I'm getting frustrated here. <laughs> And I'm just like, oh well. And I just rip it off and give up. New plan. Plan B. But like Bob Ross says, there are no mistakes. There are only happy accidents. So now I'm just going to try to get the rest of this off with my uh, little scraper razor blade thingy. It's not mine. It's my husband's. I took it from him. <laughs> he let me borrow it. And then I sanded it completely smooth. And now we're going to go with plan B for this sign. So I'm just going to paint this sign with a couple coats of white chalk paint. Um, I'm just trying to get it so you can't see any of that like brown MDF wood color showing through anymore. So just get it completely covered. And now the sides were already white, but I wanted them to um, have the same finish as the chalk paint. So I'm painting the sides of this sign too, just so it all matches to make me happy. And now that that's completely covered, we're going to use these napkins that I found at a little gift shop in Prescott when my husband and I were um, celebrating our anniversary. I saw these little napkins and I was like, these are too cute. I have to use them for my bee kitchen. So I bought them. And now I seen this tip that said, dip your fingers in water in order to pull apart um, the layers of the napkin because you need to pull apart the layers of the napkin because you only want the top layer of the napkin you don't want all layers. Uh, I don't know if the water tip really helped, but you know, I tried it. <laughs> so I'm just pulling apart the layers because we only want the top layer. Now I lost some of the footage of this uh, craft. I'm sorry about that, but I will explain to you what I did. Anyways, you'll see. I haven't lost the footage yet, but we're coming up to it. <laughs> but I will explain what I did. Don't you worry. So I'm just covering this in a layer of Mod Podge, the sign. And now I'm going to try to uh, carefully place my napkin the way I want it, centered onto my sign. And try to get it as smooth as you can. I mean, some wrinkles are okay because it just adds to that rustic look that I'm going for for everything. So a little bit of wrinkles is okay, but I am trying to get it as smooth as I can. And now I've heard that you can't rub uh, napkins 
too much when you're Mod Podging because they'll tear really easily because they're so thin. So I saw this little tip on another YouTube video where they used saran wrap and they said if you put a layer of saran wrap down before you um, try to smooth it out, it uh, saves the napkin and it, it won't tear. So I tried it and I was able to smooth pretty good and I did not tear the napkin. So that's a little handy dandy tip for you. So I'm just smoothing and smoothing and smoothing until I'm happy with it. And see, I'm rubbing pretty good and I don't get any tears. And now we're just going to go in with the Mod Podge again and we're going to put a top coat on. And um, I saw that when you're doing napkins, you're supposed to work the Mod Podge from the inside of the sign outwards. So that's what I'm doing here. Going from the in or the inside and working my way out. And then I also saw a tip that said make sure you like push the paintbrush down along the edges as you're Mod Podging to make sure that you get the napkin stuck all the way down to the edges so you don't have any like lifting afterwards. If that makes sense. So after this footage is where I lost my footage. So after this, once it's dry, what you'll want to do is what I did with my other signs. You'll take your little hand sander and you'll go in and you'll sand along the edges in a downward motion to get rid of all that extra napkin that's hanging over the edge. And so that it's flush with the sign. So that's what I'm going to do in the next step, but unfortunately my camera shut off on me and I did not know, so I did not get that footage. And then also, I also did not get the footage of me using a stencil to put the BU on there. But I have some upcoming, in my upcoming projects after this one, I'll show you how I did the stenciling. I did it the same way I did with this sign, I did in the signs that are coming up. So you'll see how I did that too. But here's the completed project. What do you think? I think it's so cute. All right, so I have this other hexagon shine, uh, shine, sign that I found from, at the Dollar Tree and this piece of uh, scrapbook paper that I got at Hobby Lobby for $1.99. Again, they always have sales, so you don't have to pay $1.99 if you uh, go on a sale day. So I'm just um, tracing it with pencil again like I did with one of my other signs and cutting it out and once I do this I'm going to like I did with the card I'm gonna put a layer of Mod Podge on the sign and then also a layer of Mod Podge onto this paper since it's so textured I thought it would stick better if I put the Mod Podge on both surfaces I lost that footage too I'm sorry this is my first video <laughs> so I'm still learning but after I Mod Podged it down, now I'm doing a layer of Mod Podge onto the top just to give it that protective top layer like I did on my other signs. And once that dries, um, I'm going to use this stencil that I got or that I made with the Icon Art stencils. It's, um, it's like the... I think it's like the Chalk Couture stencils. It's like a screen print stencil. But um, the only difference is you can design them yourself with the icon art. You don't have to buy pre-made ones. So I just stuck that down and I covered part of it because I didn't want that honeycomb shape over the whole sign. I only wanted it on specific areas. So I just put tape down on the areas that I didn't want to show. And now I have this chalk paste that I made with this, um, I don't know, this powder stuff that I got on Amazon. I mixed it with apple barrel paint. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description below of what the powder is that I use to mix with my apple barrel paint. But I just mixed two tablespoons of the apple barrel paint with two tablespoons of the powder. So I'm just, I put two, uh, some, some of the chalk paint down on the sign. And then it comes with this little scraper squeegee thing. And you just scrape along the stencil 
until all the area is covered. So that's what I'm doing here. And this stencil, um, it didn't stick super great to this paper because this paper is so textured. So I did have a little bit of bleed through, but I think, I still think it turned out pretty cute. And I'm, I was still happy with it. But here I am going on the other side of my stencil. Put the chalk paint down, or chalk paste down. And then I go in with my squeegee and I just scrape off the excess. <laughs> Now I'm going in with this metallic gold paint and I'm going to paint over the, the honeycomb uh, shape because originally it was metallic, but when I mixed it with that powder, the chalk powder, it, it made it like a matte look and I wanted it to have that metallic look. So I'm going with the folk, folk art metallic paint and I'm just going in with a little small paintbrush and I'm just go, going over the lines again with that metallic paint so that I have that shiny metallic look that I want. So that's what I'm doing here. And now I'm just showing you the difference. Can you see the, the shiny side versus the matte side? And then I just go in on the other side so they match. So they're both shiny. The way I want. And now I have another stencil that I made with my Icon Art um, kit. And I bought this little B image, clip art image um, off Etsy. And then with the Icon Art, you just print it onto like a clear paper. And then you put it over top of this uh, blue screen print paper. And then you it's got like a black light. And you turn on the black light and it burns the image into the screen stencil paper for you. That's how that works. So now I'm just sticking this stencil down onto my hexagon sign here. I'm trying to get it centered the way I want it. And then I'm going in with the painter's tape again to paint off, or to tape off the extra areas so I don't get paint where I don't want it to be. See, this is how I did the BU sign, but I lost the footage, but I did it the same way as I'm doing this. And now I have some black chalk paste that I made by mixing two tablespoons of apple barrel black with two tablespoons of that uh, chalk powder stuff that I will leave a link to in the description below so you can find it. And I just put them in these little mini mason jars so I can keep the extra. So I'm just putting a little bit of the paste down above the stencil. And then we just take our little squeaky scraper thingy and we just scrape down over the stencil. And you just keep going until all the areas are covered with that chalk paste. Just add more paste where you need it. And now I'm just scraping the excess back into my jar so I don't waste any of it. And now we're going to remove the stencil and see what we made. Here we go.
And look at it. Isn't that gorgeous? I think it looks high end to me, in my opinion. I mean, I could be biased since I made it myself, but I think it looks really expensive and not something that you would get from the dollar store. <laughs> and I just love it. What do you guys think? Now this sign I've had for years. I got it at Ross. I thought it was funny, but uh, I'm tired of it now. So we're going to remake it over uh, to go with our bead decor. So we're just taking some black chalk paint and we're just going to paint over that old sign. And just keep painting until you can't see any of those words peeking through anymore. I had to do several coats because they just kept peeking through. Maybe if I would have sanded it first, sanded the words off some, maybe that would have helped me have to do less coats, but I didn't think about that. So, And now I'm hitting the edges too, just because I want it to all have that same black finish because I don't know if my paint is the exact same black as what the original sign was, so I'm just... Painting all areas of the sign so it matches. And now it's done. But I, I like the, uh, the distress look that the original sign had. So now I'm going to go in with my little hand sander. And I'm just going to bring back some of that distressing by uh, just sanding over the edges some until I'm happy with it. So see, you can see the wood peeking through here already, giving it that distressed farmhouse look that I love so much. Now I just switched it out for a rougher sandpaper so it would go quicker for me. And now I have this stencil that I made with my icon art again. And I got the B from Etsy. It was a couple dollars for the B clip art. <laughs> you have to look up icon art stencil and how you make them. It's pretty cool. So I'm just placing my stencil onto my sign, trying to get it centered. Now I'm rubbing it down so it sticks good. And now I'm taking my painter's tape again so I don't make any messes where I don't want there to be any messes. And now I, I took that King's Gold by Apple, Apple Barrel and I mixed it with that chalk powder to make some gold chalk paste. And I'm just putting some of that at the top of my stencil. And then taking my squeegee and scraping down the stencil. Getting all that excess chalk paste off of there. And here comes the reveal. And how cool is that, guys? But we are not done. Oh no, we are not done. We have more. So I designed this. It's our family name, and I put uh, the year that my husband and I were married. I was going to say born, not born. Married on there. Established 2001, Tracy and Co. It's 
Make it look like we own, like, a, I don't know, beef farm or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, you can see. <laughs> and I'm just placing this stencil over top of the bee. For some reason, the little dot after the co, that part of the stencil is, like, popping up. I don't know what I did there, but. So now I'm just taking the white chalk paste and we're scraping that down over this. And this is my favorite of all the projects, guys. I think this is just, I just love this. I totally think it looks expensive and high end and not homemade at all. And I just, I love it. I just love it, guys. What do you think? Isn't it gorgeous? I love it. Now for this project, we're going to make a bee garland, or bee bead garland, I should say. This is our last project. So what am I doing here? Oh, I am mixing up that same shade of that really pale blue that I uh, mixed for the little terracotta pot. See, I have my little pot there. I'm trying to ma match the color. So I have that same apple barrel blue color and I mixed it with the ivory chalk paint to try to get that pale blue color. It looks about the same. So now I have the beads I have in two sizes. I have 25 millimeter and 20 millimeter. I think they're millimeter, centimeter, millimeter. I don't know. Ah, uh, <laughs> I got from Amazon. Um, and I'm using five of the bigger ones and five of the smaller ones for each color. And we're going to do three different colors. So you're going to have 30 beads total for your garland. And I just put these beads on um, a wooden skewer and I am just going back and forth from one side of the bead to the other, trying to paint them. If there's, I don't know if there's an easier way to do this, but this is the way that I do it. So, yeah. <laughs> so I just paint one side of the bead, push it over, paint the other side of the bead. Then I didn't like that sponge brush, so now I got a paintbrush. Going with my paintbrush. I'm just painting all sides of the beads. That pale blue color. And now they're all done, and now I'm just spacing them apart a little bit so that they don't get stuck to each other when they're drying, and then I put them off to the side to dry. And now we have five of the big beads and five of the small beads, and we're going to go in with that king's gold yellow color, and we're going to paint all of these the yellow color. I just keep wiping my brush off because my paint has, like, chunks of chunks in it. Does your paint do that? Your uh, acrylic paint? It like gets chunks in it after uh, probably like after the first time you use it it feels like with some colors. Alright now I'm going to do something a little bit different with the black. I tried painting them solid black. You can see them up in the top of the screen and I thought it was too dark and too harsh. So now I'm trying something else. I'm taking some black paint by Apple Barrel and I'm mixing it with some water to water it down into an old bowl that I have that I use specifically for painting. We do not eat out of this bowl, guys. I promise. <laughs> so I just drop the beads into the, the paint water, swish them around for a little while. Now I'm putting the small ones in there doing the same thing. And then I put them onto a napkin and I just kind of rub them dry with the napkin. 
and it gives them almost like a uh, stained look. I like that look. More distressed, farmhouse-y <laughs> look. Like I love. And then I just put them all back in there because I thought they weren't quite dark enough. So I put them back in. Switch them around a little bit more. Dry them off again. And now I'm happy. So now I'm putting them onto the wooden skewer that's shoved into a little styrofoam block so they can dry. And I'll just use those dark black beads for like Halloween bead garland or something later on. Uh, so now I was trying to go for that same like whitewashed effect that I did on that little terracotta pot. So I mix the ivory with water, with water and I've dropped my little blue beads in there, swishing them around, trying to give them a whitewashed look. And when I was drying them off, it kind of like rubbed off some of the blue paint a little bit. And uh, at first I was like, oh no, but then I was like, ah, oh, just, it adds to the look, right guys? It adds to the look. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. That's the look. And I was like, that doesn't look bad. It looks good. It's distressed. I like distressed look, so. So if you don't want them distressed, then skip this step. Don't put them in the water wash <laughs> or the white wash water, <laughs> whatever it's called. And then I did the same thing with the gold. And I thought it wouldn't rub the gold off since the gold's acrylic and the blue was like chalk paint, but it did. It, it wiped off some of the, the gold paint too. But like I said, it looks good. I like it. We're going with it. Now I'm just trying to show you the distressed look that it ended up having, which I think works with the black too. So it's all good. And then I got this little iron bee ornament from Prescott on my anniversary trip with my husband in a little gift shop on Whiskey Row in Prescott. Was finding all the bee goodies up there, guys. All of them. And now I am just taking some jute twine that I got from the dollar store and I am just threading my beads onto the twine. And I'm just going big, small, big, small, big, small. And then also blue, yellow, black, blue, yellow, black. So big blue, little yellow, big black. And then a small blue, big yellow, small black. You'll see what I'm saying here. <laughs> see what I'm doing? Just alternating colors and alternating the sizes. And now this isn't like your traditional like B color scheme, I guess. Like I guess that would normally just be black and yellow and white. But I was trying to, I don't know, go for something different and more, uh, I don't know, <laughs> just different. I just really like the blue. I thought it just reminded me of the bee's wings. So I wanted to incorporate blue and I really like this color combination. What do you guys think? Oh, and I forgot to add, I put a little piece of masking tape on the end of the jute twine. That makes this the twine stiffer so that it's easier to thread through the beads, through the holes in the beads. So now I have it all threaded together, and now I'm taking my little iron bee ornament thingy. And then we're just going to thread that through that little hole that's on there. And then we're just going to tie this into a few knots until you're happy with, I don't know, how many knots it has. <laughs> I don't ever do the same amount. I just keep going until I'm like, okay, that's good. It's going to stay knotted. It's not going to come undone, which every time for me is different. <laughs> I think this time I did three knots. Let's see. That was two, this is three, yep, 
three knots. <laughs> and now I'm going to take my glue gun. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody does this, but I like to do this. You put a little dab of glue on the knot, and then we're just going to wind some of that extra uh, jute twine around it just to make the, the knot look bigger. I just like the way that looks, having like a bigger little uh, knotted area down there. <laughs> so I just keep going in with little dabs of hot glue and just winding that jute twine around. And I'm using a low temperature glue gun. So I should probably still be wearing those little finger protectors, but you know, I'm not. I have them. I'm just not using them. But so I'm just, I just keep winding this around, putting little dabs of glue until I'm happy with the size. And now I'm going to take the rest of that extra string and I'm just I'm putting little dabs of glue along the, the string that the beads are on and I'm going to stick the two strings together. So I put a little dab there and I'm squeezing the strings together. I put a little more glue. Stick it together. And I don't know if everybody does this either, but this is just my way of doing it. I just feel like um, it's less likely to, uh, I don't know, come out of the beads afterwards when it's, you know, being moved around or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> That's my thought process on that. <laughs> it's safer. I don't know why. I do it, but I do it, so, you know, do it this way, or, you know, do it the way you like to do it. This is just the way I like to do it, so. <laughs> so I just keep adding glue and squishing the string together, and uh, once again, I don't have, like, a set amount of beads that I string the excess twine through. It's just, I just go until I'm happy with it. It looks like I went through five beads before I decided that was good. So then I just cut off the extra, put a little dab of glue onto the end of that string, and then stick them together. And now we're going to go to the other side of our beaded garland. You cut off the extra, and now we're going to take this jute twine and we're going to wrap it around our fingers. I like to do it uh, 30 times, or about 30 times. It's just whatever fatness of your uh, tassel that you want. <laughs> so, I like 30. I think that gives you a, a good amount, so. So now I'm gonna take the extra jute twine and I'm gonna tie it around my little loop that I made around the top, probably like an inch down from the top And I'm just going to tie a knot, and then I'm going to tie a few more knots until I think it's good. So there's one, two, I guess two was good <laughs> this time, guys. So now I'm taking that extra piece that was of string from our beaded garland, and I'm uh, threading it through that loop on our little tassel that we just made. And now we're going to tie a knot at the top. 
Then just tie enough knots until you're happy with it. We'll see how many times I do it this time. There's one. There's two. There's three. Oh, I did four this time. See, there's no rhyme or reason to what I do. I just, it's just however I feel in the moment, I guess. <laughs> so now I'm taking a piece of that masking tape and I'm putting it onto the end of my uh, jute twine here so that I can thread it through the beads again. And I'm just doing the same thing that I did at the other end. I'm just threading it through a bead and then putting a little dab of glue and sticking the strings together. It's a little bit harder this time because you can't space the beads out as much, but there we go. I'm just sticking it together and then threading it through some more beads. And it looks like I decided to go through seven beads on this side before I was happy with the length. And then I just put that glue onto the end of that jute twine that I just cut and stick them together. And now we're going back to our tassel here. And we're going to take that extra twine from the knots that we tied. And we're just going to wrap it around our little tassel here. Because I don't like to see the knot. So I just... Uh, like to wrap it around a bunch so that it just, I don't know, you can't, there's no ends to it and you can't tell that there's a knot. So I just keep wrapping till I'm happy and then I put a dab of glue on the very end of the twine and then stick it down and then we take the extra, or the other side and we're wrapping around doing the same thing. Just wrap and just glue on random spots. Try to not put too much glue because you don't want to see the glue. And then on the end, and stick it down. And now we're going to cut the ends of our tassel. First I start with a very dull pair of scissors, apparently. They're good for cutting paper, but apparently they're not so great for cutting twine. <laughs> As you'll see here in a second. See, it's not cutting through very good. <laughs> so then I get a better pair of scissors and we straighten up that edge a little bit. And now it's done. And here they are all together. What do you think? I think they are so cute and so high end and so expensive looking and you would never know that they were handmade. Or maybe you would, I don't know. What do you think? Do they look handmade or do they look store-bought? I think they look store-bought in my opinion. But again, I could be biased since I made them, but what do you think? I love them. And that is it. Those are all the projects. If you liked this content, um, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Creative Expressive. My name is Amy and today I'm going to show you how to make seven high-end B decor DIY. And home decor B. What it, do I want to say? B themed home decor items. I can't see my bun. It looks stupid. And I love to create
it just loved to create. I don't know. I just... And today I want to show you how to make seven high-end bee-themed home decor items on a budget. <laughs> creatively expressive. My name is Amy and today I would like to show you how to make seven bee themed home decor items. <laughs> I forgot to say high end. It's high end. They're high end. They're high end bee decor for cheap. Yeah. 